On November 15, 2017 at about 4.30 p.m., Lil Peep was in the back of his tour bus smoking with two of his fans. He was in a very good mood. At one point he looked out the bus window at the Arizona sky to where he said, Today is a good day. Not every day is a good day, but today is. I feel good. Less than 30 minutes later, he nodded off and never woke up again. On October 2nd, 2017, Lil Peep set out on a North American tour that would last about a month and a half, performing at 31 different cities. He had just came back from Europe where he was performing a smaller tour, but this tour in the United States was set to be even longer with less rest days. Peep suggested to his management that he wanted to take several friends from Goth Boy Click with him this time. Goth Boy Click was a collective of underground artists Peep had been a part of before signing his record deal. His management had been trying to keep him away from them as much as possible. They stated, we want you to be healthy and productive and don't think GBC should be on this tour. Because of this, there was tension building. Peep was becoming defiant toward his label and management, and GBC didn't understand why he was becoming distant with them as well, causing problems on both ends and leaving Peep in the middle of it all. His manager and label owner both decided to hire a woman named Belinda Mercer to help with the North American tour. This was an attempt to introduce a new person and clean slate. She even traded in the small vans and upgraded Peep to a real tour bus. Now he could bring people with him and he filled all 12 beds on the bus. In attendance was Peep himself, a few members of GBC, and his opening act Bexy. The other spots were all taken by the traveling crew. A merch guy, lighting director, videographer, and of course the bus driver. After loading their belongings, they packed everything, including all the drugs they could bring. Their first stop was in Seattle on October 2nd, and Peep seemed to be in good spirits throughout his performance. But only after a few dates, things became noticeably off. Something was wrong, and this time it was different. Peep was spending nearly all his time on the bus, rarely leaving to walk around the cities or even get food for himself. The one drug that seemed to be the most popular with Gus on the tour was ketamine. His friends said it was alarming because it really wiped him out and made him non-functioning. Several people on the tour bus noted Peep had been getting the ketamine from none other than his tour manager, Belinda. Allegedly, she abused the power to get everyone on the bus to do what she needed. It's important to note now that Belinda has denied these accusations since his passing and has declined to give her side of the story. On October 25th, Pete's tour bus arrived at the border between Canada and the United States. Everyone on board was asked to exit the vehicle. Officers and dogs searched the bus for drugs and they pulled Belinda to the side for an interrogation. At 1.53 p.m., Peep texted his girlfriend, I've been at the Canadian border for seven hours. I think they arrested my tour manager. Finally, in the late afternoon, the bus was allowed to cross into Canada with everyone except Belinda. They raced to Toronto without her and they arrived just in time to do that night's show. Belinda was later released and crossed into Canada on her own and rejoined them after paying a $2,000 fine, but with seemingly no explanation. As the days went on, Peep's physical and mental health seemed to be depleting at a quick rate. Management ignored these signs and urged him to keep up, despite seeing his cries for help that had been going on for months. On November 14th, the tour arrived in El Paso, Texas. Peep was on edge and very upset about the venue. He called his mom to vent that day. What he didn't know was that would be the last phone call he would ever have with her. Someone suggested that they try canceling the show. But this wouldn't work because he posted a video to Instagram that afternoon of him dropping pills in his mouth. And by posting this publicly, he made it clear he wasn't actually sick. So the show was gonna happen. El Paso, I'm good, I'm not sick. I'm gonna see y'all tonight. He only had two shows left after this and he would be done. So he decided to push through it. Despite being frustrated, he performed and finished in El Paso. And he would be getting on the tour bus toward Tucson, Arizona. The last day of Lil Peep's life began much like any other on the tour. He was still sleeping around noon when the bus pulled up to The Rock, a 600 person capacity venue on the edge of downtown Tucson. By around 3.30 p.m. he was awake, taking photos and chatting with fans outside. This was when two fans approached him. One of the fans says he was with Peep from the time they met until the moment he lost consciousness, just about 45 minutes later. But he says he never saw Peep take any pills. The two fans later said things got weird after this. Peep was shutting the door to the lounge on the bus when he began nodding off. His eyes shut and his head went forward. They yelled his name and he snapped out of it. 
He then moved to a larger couch and nodded off again. They continued to wake him up, but he ultimately would just fall back asleep. Finally, his head rolled back and he appeared to be in a deep sleep. They decided to leave where they told Peep's friends he knocked out in the back of the bus. According to them, they thought nothing of this because it was normal for him. At 5.30 p.m., Belinda came to check on Lil Peep and says she too saw he was sleeping, upright on the couch and snoring. She claims to have tried to wake him up, but his body just twitched and he wouldn't wake. 15 minutes later, she checked on him again to where he was still snoring. Bexy then came back from a shopping trip around this same time and told a similar story of Peep snoring, even posting a video online as a joke. Peep's at the back of the bus doing press-ups, sit-ups, working on his six-pack, his muscles. I'm gonna see for myself. For over three hours, nobody questioned what was happening until 8.53 p.m. An associate of Peep's noticed he was pale and his lips were blue and immediately called 911. 911, what is the emergency? I, I need an ambulance. Okay, what's the address? I'm at The Rock. I'm at a venue called The Rock. Alright, tell me what's going on there. Um, I've got, um, I work with an artist and he's just completely out of it. He's cold, he's just knocked out. I don't know what he's facing. He's not awake, we're trying to wake him up and he's not awake at all. breathing normally? I'm not really, no. Belinda pulled Peep to the floor and began chest compressions until an ambulance arrived three minutes later. Unfortunately, he had no pulse and was no longer breathing. They tried to give him three different doses of medicine, but nothing was working. Inside the venue, GBC members tried to perform a few songs in an effort to keep everyone distracted from the chaos outside. But as word spread slowly, they spilled to the street where people were crying, fights broke out, and fans took photos of his body being removed from the bus. Lil Peep was pronounced dead shortly after. The young rapper was set to perform here at The Rock on Wednesday night, and although the official cause of death remains unknown, news of Lil Peep's passing has sparked conversation about the issue of drug addiction. Several people were interviewed either by the police or DEA, but no one was ever charged. The autopsy ruled his death was an accident caused by a combination of fentanyl and Xanax. They found extremely high levels of both in his system, along with cocaine, marijuana, and opiates. It's obvious he was unaware that he was taking fentanyl, which is deadly even in small quantities. Tucson PD later closed the investigation without reaching a conclusion about where the fentanyl came from. But something he took that day contained so much that he ended up with more than twice the lethal dose in his system. 